So, you want to be a queen killer? The queen killers are the best of the best. They have coined certain trade techniques on how to most effectively and efficiently kill the Scorch Beast Queen. In this guide, I will be sharing the absolute, definitive, and undisputed do's and don'ts for fighting the Scorch Beast Queen. After watching this video, you will be educated on how to properly nuke that bitch. The queen killers are the best at what they do, and there is no out doing us. Unless, of course, you're a little virgin that spends every waking hour hacking and using injections in Fallout 76 in place of actual skill. Anyone on PC could hack their way to victory and blur their names to avoid another ban. Beef. Beef curtains? The fuck? Yeah, with a username like that, you already know this kid gets all the pussy. <laughs> Fucking sad, man. <clears throat> now, back to the video. Before I teach you how to fight the Queen, you must first learn what the Queen brings to the table, and exactly why it is so hard to kill. The Queen has a staggering initial health of 32,700 hit points. Upon reaching half health, it then mutates back to full health with an additional health boost of extra hit points. The Queen also has an insane damage mitigation effect, reducing the magnitude of all incoming damage by 70%. On top of that, she has natural thick skin that gives her a buff of 300 energy and damage resistance, respectively. It's like Frank Horrigan on crack, basically. And that's only if you fight her alone. With 8 or more people, those numbers only increase by a factor of how many players are in the event's radius. It is also detrimental to remember that Bethesda tweaked the event. Now you only get rewards such as legendaries, repair kits and flux if you deal a certain amount of damage on the Queen. This is to counter the leeches that would shoot the queen only once and hide in the bunkers, not contributing anything to the fight. So to get that loot, you have to make sure that you deal, let's say, at least 1000 damage total to the queen, just to be safe and as a placeholder until we figure out the actual number. This picture right here also shows in detail where you should be placing the nukes on the queen so you can fight her in the most effective location possible. This is to avoid the trenches of the Cranberry Bog and to provide ample room for the Queen to land in a spot for your melee combatants to not be irradiated. I cannot stress this enough, please, please always launch in one of these three spots and fight her outside of V9 Bunker. These ladies and gentlemen are the absolute don'ts of Queen killing. Some of these reasons may confuse you but it's the absolute truth that we all follow in the clan. If you've ever sat atop a V9 shooting the Queen with your heavy weapon in a suit of power armor while she's flying around, you've probably noticed a few people give you the thumbs down emote and or sent you a nasty message, and for good reason. You see, if you shoot the Queen while she's flying, not only do you do even more reduced damage to her, you have a chance to stagger her, which in turn prevents her from landing. I don't have to tell you that a ground-bound Scorch Beast Queen is easier to kill than a flying one. Yes, you could cripple her wings whilst she's in the air and force her to land, but the risk of staggering her far outweighs the time spent trying to cripple both wings. Trust me, just be patient and let her land, we have tested this extensively. Additionally, if you stand on top of V9 and by chance the Queen targets you specifically, she will refuse to land and remain flying above V9 or do her crop dusting attack over and over. So as a rule of thumb, never stand on top of V9 during a Queen fight, it will just glitch her. The place to be is around the front where I am currently standing, at the front of the fence or the sides to the left or right of your screen right now. These are the most efficient spots to fight the Queen and force her to land. The two rules just stated are the most important to follow, as anyone who does these things make the Queen battle last way longer than it needs to. For example, on our runs when we are tryharding, a Queen fight would last 2-3 to three minutes at most. But even if one person constantly shoots her in the air while on top of V9, the fight could last as long as 10 minutes. We killed the Queen in 2 seconds and hold the legit world record. We know what we are talking about. The third don't of Queen killing is grenades and Fat Man launches. You might be thinking, Tia, you're crazy, I do so much damage with my explosives. Well, yes, but actually no, the, that damage is negligible at best. You might as well be blowing bubbles at the Queen. Using rifles or melee is much more effective, not to mention each explosion is something that this game has to process 
in an already graphically and technically demanding fight. All these grenades, orbital strike beacons and fat men increase the chances of crashes and or freezes. So yeah, just don't do that. We all know Fallout 76 is a buggy mess. Just don't do those things here. This bit is more of a quality of life rule. You don't have to follow this one. But heavy guns are almost useless on the Queen. And you might have noticed they absolutely fucking ear rape your speakers. And more often than not, they audio glitch your game, so you're constantly hearing Gatling plasmas, Gatling lasers being fired well after the battle has concluded. Like I said, this is quality of life rule that doesn't need to be followed. And finally, it's simple enough, don't wander off, especially into the nuke zone. Stick together as a group in front of the fences around V9. If one person wanders off, the Queen will follow that person. And then someone that knows what they're doing will have to waste their time bringing the Queen back. Now that you know what not to do in the Queen fight, I think we can move on to what you should be doing. Obviously the most efficient way to deal damage to the Queen is melee. Melee is king, we all know this. I will have a build up on my channel in the coming weeks, but until then, a friend of mine, Captain Noob, has weapon spotlight videos with melee weapons showing just how to min-max the damage, but he's only showing the tip of the iceberg. Now, the do's are simple. Launch the nuke in the correct fashion and you'll have plenty of room to fight the queen without being in the nuke zone. And we all know not being in the nuke zone is a good thing. No rads. Assuming you all follow the don'ts section of this video to the letter, then the rest is pretty simple. In my mind, there are two ways you can effectively fight the queen. Sneak melee and sneak rifleman. First, let's discuss ranged rifleman weaponry on the queen. Now, it's almost useless when you compare it to melee, the most damage I've seen done by ranged weaponry was with a completely min-maxed build with Vats and Sneak holding a bloodied explosive gorse rifle, and that only hit for 4000 damage in the head. While it is effective to a certain degree, if you're a ranged combatant, you're more useful taking out what we call adds, so the melee crew can attack the queen uninterrupted. Adds are the creatures the Scorch Beast Queen spawns around the nuke site. For example, Scorch Deathclaws, Myolurks, etc. As mentioned before, melee is king against the queen, specifically unarmed weapons. Again, I'll have a build explaining more in detail, but for now, all you need to know is bloodied unarmed weapons, plus sneak, plus the right perks, equals absolute carnage. As you can see here. The last do of queen killing, unless you're a griefing cunt of course, don't pick up others loot bags. The people working their ass off to kill the queen are glass cannons and often die pretty quickly. Repay the favour by leaving their loot bags alone. So, ladies and gentlemen, this pretty much concludes the definitive tips and tricks guide to properly fight the Scorch Beast Queen. If you are not able to deal high enough damage to the Queen or launch nukes yourself, well at least you know what not to do once those high levels spend their very valuable nuke cards on the Queen. I hope this guide educates the masses to the ways of properly fighting the Scorch Beast Queen. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below, I will try to answer all of them. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more from me, be sure to like the video and even subscribe. Be sure to also check out the Queen Killers in the description below. Thank you all so much, I've been Tia, and I'll catch us in the next one. Peace.